Did you know that in our history, humans have mined 317 million tons of copper, most of which is still in circulation today? Non-ferrous metals are valuable for their properties such as resistance to corrosion and high strength to weight ratio. Rising environmental concerns and scarcity have led to concerted efforts to recycle and reuse as much of these metals as is possible. The huge problem we face here is that scrap metal is largely found in waste streams mixed with other less valuable waste. Hand sorting is virtually impossible in most of these instances, and so there exists a need to devise a means of painlessly extracting non-ferrous metals from waste mixes so that they can be recycled accordingly. After analyzing the problem, I dived straight into my literature study, reading as many articles as I could find on the handling, separation and recycling of non-ferrous metal. I came across the principle of eddy current separation, which operates as follows. We have permanent magnets arranged on a drum core in alternating polarity. The drum speeds at high speeds between 800 and 1500 RPM. This establishes an alternating magnetic field around the drum. When a piece of non-ferrous metal arrives at the drum, it experiences the alternating magnetic field. By induction, alternating field establishes eddy currents within the metal piece. The induced eddy currents establish their own magnetic field, which, according to Lenz's law, opposes the field established by the permanent magnets. At any given point in time, both fields have opposite polarities. This results in a repulsive interaction, which causes the non-ferrous metal to be thrown away. The detailed design included magnetic field simulations on quick-fill software to determine the magnetic field strengths and points of interest around the magnet. The data obtained was processed and integrated in analytical calculations to determine the force that a particular piece of metal would experience. From there, the CAV model was designed in SOLIDWORKS with FEA analysis carried out on components to determine their structural integrity. Once the design was approved, the construction of NW's first eddy current separator began. I spent day and night working on the assembly at our electromechanical fabrication workspace. Now, let us observe how the eddy current separator works. On the left, we have a 50 by 50 millimeter square piece of aluminium, and on the right, we have a plastic bottle cap. Right in front of the separator, we have two separate bins. The bin closest to the separator is the bin where we expect all our non-metallic waste to go, such as plastic. On the bin that is furthest from the separator, that is the way we expect all our non-ferrous metals to be repelled to upon arrival at the drum. As you can observe, the aluminium piece is thrown further than the plastic bottle cap, proving that indeed our separator works. Let's observe this demonstration from another angle. The aluminium piece and the plastic cap are set side by side and the belt is started. Upon reaching the drum, again as expected, the aluminium piece is repelled farther than the plastic cap. Those demonstrations prove the successful development of an eddy current separator for non-ferrous metals.